Um, I felt like we executed pretty well for the most part. Uh, just got to clean up a couple mistakes. Um, you know, like I said before, I felt like we came out of the gate swinging. So I was pretty proud of what we did. What we put on tape, just got to uh, execute better in the run, really. Uh, we take pride in our rush defense, so I think that's where we just need to make the most improvement. Well, you'll be tested with the rush defense against these guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, no for doubt, sure. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, preliminary to looking at things, is it a totally different way of having to play a, a, a rushing, you know, to play rush defense against these guys for you? Um, not really, not from a physical standpoint. I think it's more of a, a, a mental game. Is what our coach has been saying is what I, I agree with, is that uh, we just need to attack all night long, and that's why I feel like we're going to have the most success is if we can disrupt the line of scrimmage. Obviously, you didn't play in that game last year, but, uh, you know, you we're on the team and everything. Uh, how, how, from a team standpoint, how much do you feel you guys have unfinished business against them? Um, I think this year is it's actually uh, totally different than last year. I feel like we're all uh, more focused on what we need to do this year rather than holding on to grudges from last year. Or, oh, we almost had this game, or we almost had that game. And I think that's what really uh, is a big part of our success is that we're just focused on this year and stopping them this year. And so I think that we'll do pretty well. What did that change then? What, uh, you were here last year to now. What what's caused that to be different that everybody feels that way? To... Uh, I think the addition of Coach uh, Patterson on the defensive side of the ball, he has a whole different uh, mindset than I think than Coach Shave did. Or he's like, uh, you know, we focus more on us and rather than them. And I think that's where we're going to find success is because we're, you know, we're going to put our best eleven on the field no matter what. And I think that's why we're going to be successful. Do you have to be? I mean, you guys are aggressive, but do you have to be disciplined with their forces offense too? I mean, their triple threat and just knowing who who has the ball. Uh, most definitely, uh, we all need to play. You know, assignment football, and that's going to be the biggest test this week. Is not trying to look for the football and just doing your job every single snap on defense. Is there a different energy with conference ball now starting up? Yeah, I think we're excited. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about we want to be the Mountain West champs, and this is our, you know, this is game one, to start down that road. How hard was it for you to do what you did last year, to not be able to play games? Uh, that's probably one of the hardest things I've ever did, honestly. Just having to watch as our, you know, our team struggle last year and wanting to help and not really, you know, being part of the team. Um, so I mean, it, it was tough, but I feel like it ended up helping me in the long run. As far as like uh, with Coach Dave, you know, just getting my body right, getting my mind right, you know. So, yeah. But with that, you don't have to give any gory details into it, but what about why you changed or what went into it? Or can you give us any of that story? Oh, uh, yeah, well, when I got here, I was like a 318 playing three tech. And uh, I got all the way down to like 285 with Coach Dave. And so he just talked to me a lot about uh, transforming my body and how it'll uh, you know, show up on the field. And I mean, it's starting to now. I feel a lot better. Um, it's mostly just the physical aspect of it. And then what about the change in your coming from here from Oklahoma State and all of that that went into that? Can you talk about um, your, your movement and your days since high school and, and why you're here now? Yeah. Um, you know, I, like you said, I signed with Oklahoma State out of snow. Um, it just wasn't really a good fit for me and my family at the time. Uh, we just barely had a baby girl, my wife and I. And so, um, you know, we just started looking out for options, see where else I could go. There was a point where I almost you know, didn't play at all. And then uh, I got a call from Coach Frank, and they offered me a scholarship here, and I just I took it. Um, and I've been the best decision for me and my family. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it seems like there's no shortage of guys that can make plays on, on the defense this year. I mean, just talk a little bit about the depth in that front seven group that you guys have. Oh, uh, yeah, we definitely have a lot of depth. Um, you know, up front, we got Chris, we got Wale, we got Devon, we got Baker, we got, well, we had G Mac before we got her, we got Katie. You know, we got all these these dudes who either played last year or, you know, this is their first time stepping up. But um, for the most part, I feel like we're, we're pretty deep as far as the D line. Our linebackers got a couple injuries, but, you know, Kev and Suli coming back. So that's going to be great for us. Uh, Justice will be back soon, hopefully. Um, you know, we got a lot of uh, a lot of experience from people who played last year, so I think that'll be good for us um, as far as the front seven goes. We can have anybody in there at any time, and we'll stop anybody, in my opinion. From a defensive standpoint, how nice is it to have a couple of extra days than normal to prepare for an offense like Air Force? Oh, I think it's huge, just because uh, Air Force is a, is a different kind of beast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
we haven't really gone against a team like this yet where they run the triple option or they run probably 90% of the game. So I think uh, that extra day of preparation that we had on Saturday was huge as far as uh, getting in our alignments, you know, knowing our assignments, getting down the little detailed things as far as the game plan. Yeah, so uh, Tennessee Tech game, I mean, I think we started uh, the way we wanted to. I mean, except the first drive, I mean, first play, I mean, we had the fumble. But, I mean, uh, uh, after that, we came out and we, uh, we, had, we were attacking their defense. We were playing fast. And uh, I think we were ready to start that game. So, I mean, after that, I mean, we scored, I want to say, on every drive after that So in some way. So, I mean, uh, we did really good offensively. We did what we wanted to do. I mean, the game plan we had going in that week, uh, we did everything we wanted to do in that game plan. So, I mean, uh, took shots, and then uh, we also ran the ball really well. So, I mean, it goes both hand-in-hand -hand with passing and running. So, I mean, uh, that's all I really got to say about the Tennessee Tech game. You were part of that Air Force game last year, a game that, you know, you could have led most of the game, honestly. Um, so, uh, just uh, how hungry are you to get another shot at that? Oh, yeah, I mean, we're extremely hungry, uh, especially off what happened last year. But, I mean, that was last year. Um, this is this year. So, I mean, we're hungry. Uh, we're going to game plan for them all week, and uh, we're going to be ready to come out and start that game. It was uh, – the game was as wild an offensive game for both teams as it could have been. I mean, you guys did what you wanted to do in the game mm -hmm. last year. You ran, you threw, you did – it was kind of like you could move it yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. Can you go back on how that went? Offensively, it seemed like there was a pretty good flow in the game. Yeah, I mean, last year, I mean, we had a pretty good flow in the game. I mean, there was a couple of plays. I mean, we didn't go as we wanted, um, the fumble and stuff like that. But I mean, uh, last year, I mean, we did we did what we wanted. Uh, I mean, we scored the ball. We just got to finish out the game really in the fourth quarter last year. But. You know, Air Force's secondary really struggled against Ron Clayton's hype last year. He got Dax. Uh, Head stall this year. You got some good height in that receiving court. So, uh, um, yeah, how excited are you to, to you know, have those options going into a game where you know that their secondary struggled against your height last year? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm excited. I mean, like I said, we got those, uh, we got a lot of depth in the receiver room. So, I mean, uh, and we got a lot of height out there. So, I mean, receivers, um, I'm excited to just get them the ball. I mean, uh, obviously, it's a different. They probably got some new faces over there on their secondary this year. It's not the same people, but yeah, last year I mean we attacked their secondary, and uh, that's going to be the same game plan this year. They have a really unique way of playing offense. Do does Air Force play defense different than a lot of teams that you play as you start looking at? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean the defense. I mean they do a lot of man and stuff like that. But I mean it's not like anything crazy that we haven't seen. So I mean, uh, like I said, their offense. I mean that triple option. Uh, that's different. Not many teams run that. But defensively, they're not anything wild. But it might be a little. They might be a little different than a lot of teams you play. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, you can say that. I mean, last year they played a lot of man to us, a lot of press. Um, so I mean, I haven't really watched too much tape this year yet. But I mean, we'll get into that this week. So I mean, we'll see. Jordan, it seems like this year you're. I mean, you're doing a really good job, job using a lot of different receivers, and, and so many guys have been, have been involved with the pass game. How much of that is, is the depth, and how much is it just like your familiarity with, with the offense and with those guys? Yeah, I mean, like we said, we got a lot of depth in the receiver room. Um, that comes with tight end and slot receivers, too. So, I mean, uh, we got a lot of weapons out there, and then my job is just to get them the ball. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, like I said, we got playmakers that when you get them the ball, they're going to make big things happen. So, my job is just to get them the ball. Um, so, you know, we saw yeah we saw spring football and we wondered who you might throw to. I mean, it, it, you never seemed to be when we talked to you. You never seemed to be worried because you know if you guys were sitting out and you knew some other guys would be coming eventually. But the mm -hmm. guys who come in been even better than you thought they'd be to help. Yeah, I mean, we we've had a lot of new faces since uh, spring ball. I mean, they've came in and done a lot. I mean, like Jalen Green wasn't here in the spring. Uh, Devin Tompkins wasn't here. Devin Hextel wasn't here. Um, so I mean. Guys that weren't here in the spring, they've really showed up, and um, it just it just helps our offense have those those weapons ready. So. Talk a little bit about your offensive line and, and the job that they've done protecting you so far this season. Yeah, I mean O line. I mean, like I said, we we have a great O line right here, and uh, they've done a really good job all season so far. I mean, I haven't really been hit that much, um, and that's just that's just them being able to 
pass protect, and they're doing a really good job. Um, and also in the run game, I mean, we've broke for a lot of big runs, and they're just doing a really good job. Um, and I mean, I'm happy that they're my O line. So, do you have a lot? Do you have a lot of options in our offense to run the ball sometimes? that you end up giving it to somebody else or, or passing or whatever? Is there a lot of that in our offense? Yeah, I mean, our offense, I mean, we do a lot of zone reads. So, I mean, all the time I'm reading the defense, reading the DNs and stuff like that. So, I mean, I can get a pool on the edge. But um, and also we get a lot of throws. Um, we get it thrown on the perimeter a lot on our, like, now screens and bubble screens and stuff. So, I mean, uh, there's a lot of chances I can get pools. But, I mean, it just depends on how the defense is defending us. So. How do you feel you are as a runner? I mean, I feel like I've gotten a lot better as a runner. Um, uh, I feel I feel comfortable when I run the ball. I mean, I'm not scared or anything like that. But um, I feel like I've gotten a lot better as a runner. A uh, couple, I mean, two games in a row that were pretty big blowouts. How much of the offensive playbook really opens up in games like that? Uh, I mean, our offense. I mean, we just we have we have certain plays we just stick to and we run our plays no matter what. So I mean, it's not like we're going in and saying we're not going to run these specific plays against different teams. But I mean, we just we run the plays that uh, Coach O's that we need to run to get um, to get the points we need. So I mean, it's not like we don't run plays. I feel like. What's it been like to watch uh, Henry Columby back you up? He had went 99 for nine of nine for 55 yesterday or last Saturday night, or excuse me, last Thursday. What's it been like to uh, work with him? Yeah, I mean it's good. Uh, him getting that playing time he needs. So I mean, uh, it just I mean like that was me last year getting that finally getting that playing time. It just helps um, when you're actually getting on the field. So I mean, uh, I mean it just helps build confidence in himself. And uh, and then I mean going for nine for nine that's really good. So I mean, if it's we know that, like, if I ever go down or something like that, we got we got someone that's he's there, he's ready, to step up. So, just a quick thought of going into conference play and how important that is to you guys now this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, got those first games out of the way, so I mean, it's time for conference. These are the games that I mean, they matter most. So I mean, uh, I mean, we're going to prepare the same we have all year um, uh, and just get ready for these conference games. Air Force uh, this week, uh, Mountain West opener has got our attention and uh, man, excited to play on Saturday night. Our guys are, our coaches are. Um, I have a, first of all, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for Coach Calhoun and his staff. Many of them have been there for a long time. Troy is one of the veterans in um, the Mountain West Conference, he and Coach Long, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for those guys. And, Really, um, what they do on both sides of the ball, special teams, they're very, very consistent, dangerous, always blocking punts. Um, and so they get your attention real quick. Um, you know, this year's Air Force team, uh, we're about to get a dialed up version of the Air Force team coming off a of bye week. They'll be very fresh. Um, they're going to show us some stuff, I'm sure, that we, uh, you know, you hadn't seen on tape. And it's the Mountain West opener for them, too. So I know they'll be. Um, They'll be all ready to go, and, and um, you know this game has been one that's come down to the wire three years in a row, and um, you know this is a um, an Air Force team that is uh, talented, you know, and they're getting bigger. You know, I, as I look at their defense, Fafita and uh, Jordan, the the DN 94, those guys are big, strong, athletic. Uh, to me, the two outside linebackers, eight and 29, uh, played against both of them last year. Um, they are good, really good and uh, strong. They can run, you know, offensively, you know, whoever plays quarterback, I don't, you know, we're going to prepare for a system, uh, and prepare for what they do. Um, Wortham, Sanders kicked our butt last year. I mean, the Hammond kid, he's big and strong and athletic. I talked to a high school buddy in Georgia about him and this weekend and, you know, it's uh, all three of them can play. Um, they're all good quarterbacks. Um, they got a great system of what they do with them. Mike Thiessen does a tremendous job uh, getting those guys coached up. And um, this year will be no different. They do a tremendous job on offense. And um, the multiplicity that they do it all with is um, phenomenal to me because I know they don't have a ton of practice time. 
um, at the academy. I know that from you know just coaching at one and being familiar there. And so everything that they do on offense, man, it's to me it's a testament to those coaches and a really really well coached um, team. And so that's uh, that's Air Force. And um, go ahead and open it up for any questions. Al, you want to start us off? Uh, in any way, can you put into words? Uh, so people can understand it, I mean, a little bit about how hard it is to play against their, I mean, their offense and how yeah. they do things. Yeah. Just explain that just a little bit. Well, the first of all, um, you know, you don't see the triple. Uh, the midline, belly, belly G, trap, trap option, long toss, all the play actions, post wheels, um, you know, the, the dig post, combinations they get in um, unbalanced unbalanced tackle over tied in eligible on the backside uh, twins over I mean you name it they're doing all of it out of every formation um, then they get in the gun and um, you know and do a lot of the gun option stuff double option stuff with all the play actions um, off of that that's okay so I just mentioned all that now you got to do it on you only you know you only see it once a year, and so um, I certainly think the couple extra days helped us. Um, but you only see it once a year. If you saw it every week, that's yeah, a different story. But that's you know I think I think some of their in, inherent advantages of their offense, what they pose against a scout team, uh, an opposing scout team trying to mimic that. First of all, they can't. We can't. Um, and you struggle doing that. Um, but I think it's some of those advantages I think we have on our offense because I don't think scout teams can mimic what we do as fast as we do it and as well as we do it on offense. So I think we have those same type of advantages. I At least that's what I, I'm led to believe, what I would hope so, because teams only see as fat, teams that go as fast as we do um, and no huddle once a week, or excuse me, once a year. or few times a year and they only got a week to prepare for it and I don't think the scout teams do it justice. I think the same thing our offensive scout team won't even be close to Sanders and Worthman and anybody else they they have and I mean Cleveland I mean I'm gonna tell you what three is talented now I, I've said that I've in in this office for the last two years um, that guy can play in some power five schools I think he's extremely athletic he runs the ball well um, he catches it um, and um, man, he's smooth. He's a smooth operator. The, them going to shotgun has that been a little bit more of what they've added the last couple of years? They've had shotgun in it's their offense. Like their quarterback used to always be under center, and then there was the dive play and the option yeah. runs. And stuff. Yeah, they've they've had it in their offense for the last several years. Okay. Uh, Coach Fua was talking about uh, the focus that it takes to play a triple option team, a team like Air Force. How I mean, how important is it? focus and the discipline to just stay on top of that triple option? I think it goes all goes to your preparation, first of all. If your preparation's at a high, high level um, and you practice well during the week, then I think you'll do it on Saturday. Um, the, the focus and the attention to detail, to me, really, more than any other week has to be at an all-time high because um, don't, you know, I'm going to tell them a million times this week, don't get bored doing your job because the minute you get bored and you try to do somebody else's job or you put your eyes somewhere they're not supposed to be is the minute you got a slot going right past you for a touchdown or you, you don't, you don't uh, take the fullback you know, on the midline and you don't take the quarterback or somebody's you got two on the pitch and, and, you, and you're, you're screwed up. <laughs> Make sure you all get that in print. Yeah. Coach, you spent some time working at the, the Naval Academy as you talked about. How much... How much more respect did you gain for these teams that, that do what these guys do while, while spending some time there? A ton. That's where the, that's where it all started. You know, the the five years that I had at the Naval Academy, um, and the amount of respect that I had for for all three academies, for what those kids do um, on a daily basis, what they do for our country once they graduate. Um, it's a I, I can't pay them enough respect, um, and you know that is kind of heightened for me the every week that we play Air Force um, here in the Mountain West and um, you know just I, I 
I don't know personally what those cadets at Air Force are going through, but I've seen it, you know, close up as a coach at the Naval Academy, and um, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for them. Um, you know, football, the practice, and I mentioned that they don't get a ton of practice time. Uh, that's the fun part of their day. Um, you know, in the off season, lifting weights, that's the fun part of their day. And um, though these guys um, play, I think, with a tremendous amount of energy and um, passion um, for the sport. Great team players, great teammates. Um, they know how to overcome adversity. They go through it daily. They go through it every summer. Um, and these are the guys that, you know, you want protecting you and your country, um, our country. Um, for our freedoms on a daily basis, and um, you know that I have, I have a lot of respect for them. It's a good weekend for the Mountain West. We watched mm -hmm. the Arizona State or San Diego State and Fresno State games. Uh, three wins against Pac-12 competition this week. Uh, how big is that for uh, the conference? Oh, I I guess it's. I'm sure Commissioner Thompson's pretty happy. Um, <laughs> I'm just glad the Aggies won Thursday night. You know, um, I think we have a good conference. I think uh, the nation's starting to kind of find out. Shoot, San Diego State's done it, what, three years in a row? Yeah. I mean, they've done it. So uh, I wasn't real surprised that that happened, to be real honest with you. Although it was a nice win with the first time starting quarterback against a really good defense in Arizona State. I mean, you're really not opening conference play because Colorado State and Hawaii played the one game, but this is the only other conference game this week. So it just it's it seems like it's a it's a really important game to what you've tried to build this year to be at the end of the home stand and to finish off the three games and all that stuff. Well, I'd like to be one and zero at home this week and one and zero in the Mountain West. You know, at midnight Saturday night, that's the goal. Um, but uh, you know, we we trying to build the program and. Um, coach our players to be in a position to uh, compete for a championship in November. This game's going to go a long ways in saying that. What are the biggest, I mean, Aggie fans really haven't seen worth, worth win unless, unless they've watched other games and obviously they saw Sanders last year. What are the, I guess, the biggest uh, strengths, the biggest differences that they those two guys bring to the offense? Well, first of all, they're, they both are well versed in the offense. Um, I don't think that changes. Um, Worthman throws it well. He's, he's thick. Um, I think he runs it really good. Um, I think Sanders' play speaks for itself. Last year, you know, in, in November, he ran right through us like we, we look like Logan Junior High. We look like Mount Logan. I mean, it, we looked horrible. And he, he and the fullback had a lot to do with that. And, and um, so I have a lot of respect for those guys. And they've certainly played well against the Aggies. Are you closer to getting some of these guys who have been out back? I think so. I hope so. We'll see this week. And there's a, a lot of them that are maybe coming back by the middle of the end of the week. And we'll see if they can practice. And, and um, you know, if they don't practice, they won't play. Um, so they've got to be back by the, by the end of the week. We'll see. I know you don't like to talk about injuries, but David Woodward didn't play the last game. Was he hurt? Yeah, he's day to day. Okay. Yep. Seems like the linebacker court just. He did not play end. because he's day to day. Okay. That was the only reason. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, it seems like the linebacker court. I mean, on that subject, yeah. subject just yeah. taking hit after hit. Whether yeah. you know whether it's uh, gone for a funeral, whether it's an injury. Just I mean, how much have these guys lowered down and step trying to step up and, and make plays for you guys? Well, I mean. Thursday night, um, probably if you'd have said it at the end of training camp, Chase Christiansen was either the second or the third linebacker at the end of training camp, and I think Ofa or excuse me, uh, Micah was the sixth. So that's who that's the two we started and played with the vast majority of the game. So you guys can do the rest of the math. That's how many guys we've had out of linebacker. As you went back and looked at it, did some other younger guys you mentioned Tompkins has showed up. But did some other younger guys all of a sudden you're saying, hey, maybe we are going to have to? Uh, I, you got a chance to see him a poll half. I think the conversation play. centers around Jacob South the most. Um, he he's been in the two deep since the middle of training camp at at tackle. 
Um, and he's played in the last two games, and he's played very, very well. And he's graded out well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we get a couple linemen back from injury, um, where they're at, um, how well the returning starters are playing. Um, because I've challenged each and every coach you know, in our program that we're going to play the best 11 guys on both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, there's no, there's no seniority around here in terms of playing time. The best players will play. If they're true freshmen, um, if they're returning starters, it doesn't matter to us. And um, I think that is a challenge to our, our players that the best players are going to play and you're only as good as your last tape. And the motivation to practice very well and to perform well each week um, is at a little bit higher level than it has been the last couple of years because of our depth. It's always hard to see a senior get hurt in GMAC. Uh, how confident are you going to be able to get him maybe a medical redshirt? We'll see. Yeah, uh, he and Aaron Dalton are both in the same boat. Have you not? Well, I guess it's hard to say because the last two games have been out of realm, but have you rotated defensive line like you have other years as much? Um, I would say it's been a little bit slower rotation on the D-line. We've rotated um, five to six guys max in the years past we've probably rotated closer to eight mm -hmm. you know like about two and a half deep now we're barely too deep if we're rotating the best players are going to play we're in a little bit better shape we can play a little bit longer um the more the i think the other thing is that you have to look at is how well is our offense playing you know our offense is playing well and and um you know playing a lot of plays which is what we want to do on offense and i think the defense gets more more time to rest, then I think your starters can play a little bit longer. And the Facebook timeouts the last two weeks seem like they last longer than TV timeouts. So I think our guys have been getting more rest. <laughs>